something is running low or something, isn't it? So you also, as a spiritual person, one of the ways to know whether the Holy Spirit is still with you is not by how much you read your Bible, you pray in tongues, whatever. It's by conviction, do you see? When you are doing something, do you feel any conviction? Do you see? Even when you are angry and you lose your temper and you argue or you say something, do you get it? You didn't mean to. Afterwards, you even feel bad. Do you get it? Some of you don't even feel bad. You even you even say, ah, the time was too short. Do you get it? Yeah, he's, he's lucky Reverend Yao came to intervene. I would have given it to her, pa, and she would have seen. <laughs> you understand? Yeah. You get it? Yeah. And as you are going home with your husband, you are even forced that like, you should turn the car around. You want to go back for round two and give it to that, that small girl. <laughs> hey! Do you see? So when you don't have any conviction in you, it's a sign that the Holy Spirit has left you. Do you see? And it's only a matter of time before the Holy Spirit packs his bags and leave. Do you see? It's just like any visitor. When I've come to stay with you, you don't give me food. Uh, when it's cold, you don't put the heater on. When it's hot, you don't put... It's only a matter of time before I pack my things and go. Isn't it? Yeah. And that's how the Holy Spirit is. You see, you cannot continue living in sin and expect the Holy Spirit to always be with you. Amen. All right. So every form of righteousness and right living. Amen. Look at Ephesians chapter 4, verse... Um, oh, look at Galatians chapter 3, verse 6. Galatians chapter 3, verse number 6. What does it say? All right. And as Abraham believed God, it was counted to him for righteousness. So one of the ways you can also get for yourself righteousness is by believing. Believing in God and believing in the things of God and the Bible, you become righteous. Amen. See, some of you, it's so sad that many Christians don't believe the whole Bible. Do you understand? Yeah, you believe part. Anybody see? The Bible is the sum of everything. Do you see? So you cannot, you 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 cannot take part and leave part. You see, it's just like when some of these companies, Verizon, whatever, are offering a bundle. Do you get it? Like a triple play: phone, internet, and um, what? Um, and cable for seventy nine dollars. You see, you cannot go and say, "Oh, I only want one for this price." It's a, it's a you have to take all. So when you take one, it's a different price. When you take two, it's a different price. But if you want this price, you have to take all three. And that's how the Bible is. You have to take everything. It's the sum total of it. But you see some Christians, they believe some, they don't believe the others. It doesn't work that way. Amen. All right. So righteousness, righteousness, living right. Some of you, your act of unrighteousness is the friends that you even have. Do you get it? Yeah, the friends that you're associating with, your company, your group of people, just by hanging out with them, you have become an unrighteous person. Do you understand? Yeah, you have become an unrighteous person. I remember a long time ago, I was dealing with some issue with um, one of my members from somewhere. And it was just this recurring sin. Do you get it? Then I just asked him, how, how did this thing all start? Then he said, oh, it was a long time ago. I had this friend. Do you get it? And he told me something. And since then, I've been doing that thing. Yeah. So we realized that this guy's problem would not have started if he hadn't met this other friend. Amen. Do you see? So some of you, your friends, I tell you, you see them so innocent, casual, whatever, but invisibly or mysteriously, they are shaping your destiny. But you don't know. That's why you must be careful. You see, when we say have friends in the church, let your friends only be great. You don't understand. See, it's not everything we can go deep and explain. You see, that's why it says for Abraham, it was counted unto him for right because he believed. Do you understand? Yeah, because he believed. Abraham wasn't like Moses who needed a lot of explanation. You see, many of us, we, we really behave like Moses. You want a lot of explanation, a lot of miracles, a lot of signs before you believe one single word. But Abraham just believed. And the Bible said because of that, it was counted unto him righteousness. You see, so believers, when we say, look, this person is not good for you. Do you understand? This person is not good for you. Amen. People carry evil spirits that you have no idea about. Do you understand? They themselves, they don't even know they are carrying evil spirits. Do you see? And you see that time and time again, God tries to save you. 
Do you see? But again, again, you see that you find yourself just going back to the same thing. It's, it's some powers that is disturbing you. Remember, we went through the different four um, demons, isn't it? Powers is a strong force that seems to draw you to something that you know is not good for you. But you cannot resist. You just keep going back to that thing and going back. It's a power that is at work. And you must break that power. Amen. Because many of us, truly, the way we are living our life, uh, yeah, it's like you are just juggling with your life. You see the people who do the juggling stuff, you have three balls and you are just juggling, juggling. You see, sometimes it's only a matter of time before you drop one. And many of us, that's how we are. You are just at the verge of dropping something. And when you drop it and you break it, that, that is it. There's nothing else God can do. Amen. Look at it in James chapter 1, I believe. Are you still here? That is why one of the prayers that you must pray is for God to always cross your path with righteous people. Do you see? And good people who will provoke you. Amen. Unto good things. Let no man say when he is tempted that I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil. Neither tempted he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lusts and enticed. Everybody, there is something that entices you. <laughs> Do you understand? So I think last week or so I was giving the example that. See, many women think that men are all enticed by sex or naked women. Yeah. Do you understand? You'll be surprised that not every guy is into pornography and naked. No, 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 no. Everybody has what entices them. You see, and the sad part about this statement is that many a time you don't even know what entices you, but the devil knows. That's how occasionally he comes to, you know, shake it in front of your eyes. You get it, entices you. Amen. All right. Yeah, because you've decided that you read your word to steady the devil, but he's been studying you for more than 2,000 years. He's been studying you. You see, but you don't want to do any studies. That's why he always has an advantage over you. Then when lust has conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is fully finished, bringeth forth death. All right, yeah. So do not err, my beloved brethren. Okay. When you get yourself into something and you don't get out of it quickly, what happens is that that thing must finish its course. Do you understand? Even though God has forgiven you. Do you see? Like for instance, if you go sleeping around, sleeping around, sleeping around, and you catch a disease, do you see? You, you, that, you see, you started something. Sleeping around, sleeping around, ah, you think, oh, Charlie, I'm good, I'm good at it, I'm good at it, do you see? Yeah, and every day God will forgive you, God, it's true. At the point, you see that it enters into something else, it changes gear, <laughs> do you see? Yeah, it changes gear. It's just like, you see, it's just like when you are driving your car without oil and you keep getting noticed, the oil, oil and you keep going, going and you can't go for a while. After a while you see that hand and the thing will change gear then the car will just stop. Do you understand? Yeah. And so when that happens, do you see, God has still forgiven you, but you've still got this disease. And if you are not lucky, you will still die. It doesn't mean God didn't forgive you. God has forgiven you. Do you see? And maybe you might even make it to heaven. Do you see? But you have started something that must finish a course. <laughs> Do you see? Yeah. You have started something that must finish its course. And as for that one, God cannot help you. He's forgiving you. He still loves you. But that thing must finish. And it's right here. All right. That's why I say stop juggling with plenty things. You get it every day. Oh, pastor, I'll change. Oh, pastor, I'll change. Oh, pastor, I'll change. Do you see? Oh, pastor, I'll come. Oh, pastor, I'll come. You get it? As we keep calling you, come to church. Come to church. Come to church. Look, God's hands, it can be stretched only at the point. Oh, at the point to just withdraw his hand. Do you understand? Are you here? You're going home. Hmm? Yeah. So, when we keep encouraging you, do you get it? Come to church. Come to church. Do something for God. See, it's only a matter of time. After a point, we will be tired. We won't say it anymore. Do you see? Yeah. And you'd have lost your position. So, be very careful. Amen. All right. Another way we also contract unrighteousness is when you are not able to recover quickly. Do you see? This is another major problem in the church today or in the body of Christ. You see that people cannot recover. Do you see? It's like God has forgiven you, but you can't even forgive yourself. <laughs> you see, this is what happened to Judas. 
do you see? And ultimately he hanged himself. Yeah, he couldn't recover. But we see that Peter also had a problem, isn't it? Yeah, he denied Jesus three times, live. You see, but after his whatever, his uh, went through his personal whatever, do you see? He came back and even became the head of the church. Do you see? So when you are not able to also recover quickly from things, then you see you are entering. Remember, I said the example I gave before, you are entering into the next gear. Do you see? Yeah. We shouted at you or whatever. You feel we disgraced you at the shepherd's meeting. We called your name, whatever. You embarrassed. You are not able to recover. You are not able to recover. You are not able to recover. Then now you are entering into bitterness. Then that's another demon. Do you understand? You are entering into bitterness and hurt. Do you see? Yeah. Then the time you realize you are entering into something else. It's changing gears. The thing is changing. It's becoming more severe. All right. So learn to recover from things quickly. And just move on. Amen. What do you think? Yeah. You'll be so amazed how you are talking to some people after so many years. Then when you thought you have more, then they'll bring. Oh, pastor, you know, I've always wanted to tell you this, but you know, I've never had the right opportunity. You know, seven years ago. Hey. <laughs> so all along, seven years, as I've been working with you, not knowing you had an issue. Uh, and me, I've been putting you in the front seat of my car. Hey, dangerous person. <laughs> you could have killed me. Messy. All right. So learn to recover from things and let things go. Amen. What do you think? Great. Principle number three. Principle number three. Ephesians chapter six. And having your feet shut with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Do you see it? Do you see it? And your feet shut with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Amen. All right. This is the third principle or the third way to arm yourself so you can be strong. Is that your feet must be shut with the word of God. The gospel of peace. Amen. Do you understand? Now, if you've, um, I wish we could have pictures. Maybe next week we'll get some pictures of the armor and um, warfare. But if you look at warfare, okay, maybe Roland can also attest to it he's been in the army before he's one of the most essential um um what word am i looking for weapon or whatever gadgets of any soldier is your boots isn't it roland yeah your boots this because if you have whatever gadgets whatever and you, you 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 can't run do you understand you can't run there's no point Diana, you, you can't stand. So you realize, go, let's start from verse 10 or verse 8, wherever it starts. Finally, my brethren, L listen to something. We're going to count how many times you see the word stand, stand, stand. This, he said, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his mind. Put on the whole armor of God that, that you might be able to what? Stand, stand against, stand against the wiles of the devil. All right. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, all of that. Next verse. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to what? Stand. Do you see? So an essential part of the weapons that you need is, right, is your feet. Okay, your feet are very important in terms of battle. Hallelujah. Uh, we march with our feet. Your feet is what gives you direction. Do you understand? So you can have vision, you can have whatever, but if you don't have direction, you don't have the, you don't have the ability to be able to move. Do you get it? Or everything you have is useless. Amen. Do you understand? Yeah. So you can be in the whatever Marines, you have all the gadget, night vision, goggle, you have that, you have that, radio, whatever. If the enemy is coming and we've shown you coordinates that go here, you cannot go. <laughs> Do you understand? You are useless. Amen. Do you understand? So your feet shot with the preparation of the gospel of peace is very, very important. Let me read something to you real quick can i read something to you are you sure all right hopefully i can find it all 
All right, it says in the Bible, the foot is a symbol for the direction or the walk of a person's life. Having our feet shot with the preparation of the gospel of peace gives us good footing. Amen. And it prevents us from backsliding. Do you understand? Now, when you look at the armor, again, next week I'll try and get you pictures. When you look at the armor, right, it talks about the belt, isn't it? The breastplate, your feet, the helmet of salvation and everything. But you realize that there is nothing for the back. Do you see? Because in the olden days, the real armor, there is no protection. You have to tie it at the back. And so your back is exposed. And it was intentional because no good soldier is supposed to retreat from war. Do you understand? So when you are going, you see, hey, there are plenty. I'm going back. No. Yeah, no, 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 no. Yeah, so when you watch some of these movies like Alexander the Great, Troy, and all these, when you see them, you see that even when they see they are losing, nobody turns back. Yeah, because your back is exposed. Do you see? And many of us, this is the problem. And when we have time, I'll read it again, um, what I was reading from you from Rejoiner's book. You will see the Bible says that the enemy, they are marching against that, and they are coming. And you see that even when we are defeating them, they are still coming. They are not retreating. It is only Christians who retreat at war amen yeah that's why every day yeah we are stabbing you in the back <laughs> do you see because your back is exposed do you see and i'm saying this to say that one of the ways not to be able to turn back is when your feet is properly shot with the gospel of peace do you get it when your feet is not when you are not prepared then you will have the tendency to want to retreat amen do you see so of all the things that we are saying about the armor of God, I think one of the most important ones is this principle number three. Having your feet shot with the preparation of the gospel when you know the word. Now, why am I saying that? Because this is the weapon that Jesus used. Remember when he went to the wilderness and Satan came to tempt him? Yeah, he was shot. His feet were shot with the preparation. You see that Satan didn't want to give up. He would say, they'll say yeah, Satan doesn't retreat. It is only Christians who retreat in the battle. Yeah. But you see that Jesus' feet was properly shot with the gospel. Amen. Yeah. So that's why at the end, you see that it says Satan left him for a while. For a while. And he went to regroup and come back again. So your feet being shot with the gospel is very important. That is why quiet time is important. Reading your Bible is important. Look, anytime you read your Bible, what happens is that we, you, we expose the devil. Do you see? That's why the devil doesn't like you to read the Bible. Amen. Yeah. He doesn't mind you coming to church, praying, whatever. Yeah, but you see that many Christians, number one thing we all struggle from is reading the Bible. Do you see? Because the devil knows that that is where the power is. Because anytime you read the Bible, we expose. Or anytime you go to a good Bible-based church, we are exposing the devil. Do you get it? Exposing the devil, exposing the devil, exposing the devil. Do you see? Yeah. And that is the greatest advantage you can have over your enemy. That's why this um, Snowden guy who was caught, that's why he's, he's a, a, a prince in Russia. Do you get it? Because he's exposing America. Do you see? Yeah. To, to the rest of the world. So he's highly treasured. <laughs> Do you see? Yeah. All right. And that is how it is. Anytime you read a word, we expose a little bit of the devil to you and the devil to you. And so he knows that. So that's why he keeps you mm, from reading your word, isn't it? And from praying. Are you not amazed that when it's time to read the word and pray, he'll tell you to sleep? But amazingly, when it's time for Sunday, he himself wakes you up, Charlie. You have to go to church. <laughs> yeah. Some of you, the devil tells you, the devil goes and sits in the car. It's like, look, I'm ready. <laughs> it's like, let's go. Because <laughs> he knows that you now, when you come, Charlie, when preaching starts, your mind will be somewhere. Yeah. So the devil comes to church and he's blessed. He gets jobs when he comes to church. God gives him a job. Yeah. And you come and you come and sleep. What an unfortunate thing. All right. So... Your feet shot helps you to pre prevent backsliding as well. As we become involved in spreading the good news or you get more involved in preaching it, it strengthens you and then it strengthens others also and then it weakens the enemy's attack. Amen. 
That's why the Bible says in Isaiah that how beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of them that bring good tidings, that publish peace. Amen. All right. Are you there or are you going home? All right. Then the, the writer gives an example. Let me read it to you. It says, growing up in New York City, my brother and I would occasionally go ice skating. On one of these days, he and I got into a disagreement. And I discovered that it was very difficult for him to box or to fight with me whilst, ice, whilst wearing the ice skates. Having good footing in a fight is essential for victory. Otherwise, you are prone to slide all over the place and to even fall down. Do you see? A friend of mine was hiking in some blistering hot desert mountain when he came upon a large fast moving creek after taking a drink he removed his new hiking boots and socks to avoid getting them wet as he crossed the creek but despite his careful effort he lost his footing and slipped on a wet rock losing both his new boots and socks into the rushing water he then described the agony of hiking barefooted for miles on burning hot rocks through the wilderness or through the, um, the hiking trail. The lesson, the lesson that my friend learned applies to the Christian life as well. You don't want to be caught without your gospel shoes while journeying through this wilderness. Don't remove your gospel shoes for any reasons. Amen. All right. So your shoes are very important. It's what keeps you standing. Do you understand? It's what keeps you standing. In any fight, when we are fighting and we're able to get you down, do you get it? That is the end of your life. In karate, taekwondo, jiu-jitsu, even in wrestling. The main aim is to get your opponent down. When he's lying on the floor, you have victory. Do you see? And when you don't have good shoes, that is what's going to happen. You cannot run far. You cannot stand for long. Amen. All right. So as Christians, our gospel shoes uh, must always be on. Amen. What do you think? So that we can have better footing to fight against the enemy. And remember, once you engage the enemy or in any warfare, you cannot retreat because there is no covering for your back. Do you get There is no back plate uh, of righteousness or anything. No. You have the shield, you have the sword, you have the helmet and by your back. Because the idea is that you cannot retreat. You are going in, in, in until you even die. Do you understand? You are better off dying going in than dying coming back. <laughs> Hallelujah. Are you or you going home? All right. So ladies and gentlemen, may God help us as we arm ourselves. All right. And always remember the devil, he is always attacking us. Do you understand? Yeah. And so you also need to be prepared. Do you understand? You also need to be prepared because when you give him the chance, he will easily overtake you. Amen. All right. So put on the belt of truth. Have the breastplate of righteousness. Try. Try hard to live a righteous life. Try hard to speak the truth. Speaking the truth. I tell you, just that one alone. You see how strong you become. All right. And always have your feet shut with the preparation of the gospel. Always have a word for the devil when he comes. Do you understand? When the devil comes, don't say my grandmother said. Don't say my father said. <laughs> don't be quoting uh, <laughs> feebles and wise sayings. They, they, they don't, demons are not afraid of that. What they are afraid of is the word of God. The word. All right. The word. The word. The words that I speak. They are spirits and they are life. Stand to your feet. Let's close. Why don't you lift your hands and begin to pray for yourself. Pray for the help of the Holy Spirit to help you. To help you in this battle. In this battle that the enemy has waged against us. That you will be strong. 
says, finally, my brethren, be strong, be strong, be strong, be strong. It is possible. You can be strong. You can be strong. You can be strong. You can be strong. Pray for strength. Pray for spiritual strength. Pray for the help of the Holy Spirit. Pray that God will make you a strong Christian. Pray that from today you will not be a shallow Christian anymore. You will not be a weak Christian anymore. You will know, be a strong Christian. You will have your feet shot with the preparation of the gospel of peace. That you will have the Holy Spirit in you. The spirit of truth. The spirit of truth. The spirit of truth. That from today you resign from all forms of unrighteousness. That you will live a righteous life. That you will live a righteous life. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father we thank you we bless you this morning thank you for your blessed word that has come unto us may your word fall on good ground oh god may none fall by the wayside let it bless your people let it strengthen us let it change and transform us in the mighty name of jesus we bless you in jesus name and every head bowed every eye closed if you're here this morning you want to say pastor pray with me you want to give your life to christ you're not born again I want to give you that opportunity. All it takes is a simple prayer. Simple prayer. Decide. Decide. Some of you have been coming to church all this while. But you've made up your mind. You will never give your life to Christ. It's a bad mind to have. Decide today that I want to give my life to God. I want to give my life to God. And let God take over and help you. God wants to help you. But he cannot do it unless you let him in. So you want to say, Pastor, pray with me. I want to give my life to God. All it takes is a simple prayer. Just lift your hands way above your head so I can see. Way above your head. Way above your head. Father, we thank you so much for our salvation. We pray for our friends and our family that are not saved. That through us, let salvation come to them. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Everybody just say after me, Dear Lord, I thank you for today. Thank you for your son Jesus who died on the cross and shed his blood for me that through his blood I might be saved. Today I confess all my sins and all my iniquities. Please forgive me and write my name in the book of life. Give me the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Give me the gifts of the spirit of truth. Help me to be a strong Christian in Jesus name and say Satan from today all my association and all my ties with you are severed from today from today I live for God alone I live for Christ alone tell him pack your things and leave there is no room for you anymore in Jesus name hallelujah give the Lord a mighty clap of friend you may be seated Right, quickly, we want to take our second offering and our tithe. If you're here this morning, you brought an offering to the Lord. Um, why don't you take it out? And if you have your tithe also, why don't you um, come up front, please? Let us pray for you. Don't come into his presence without a good offering.